Hi and welcome to another edition of Willis Garage Norway. This video is going to be a long Fusion 360 tutorial on how I designed the Rubo bench. So some of you are going to find this video quite boring, but some of you are going to find it quite interesting and learn a lot from it. If you follow me on Instagram and or Facebook, you have seen that I plan on building myself a Rubo style workbench for my workshop. I'm planning on making a small series on this workbench that contains everything from planning to building and in the end improvements like a legwise foldable work seat and bench dogs. In this first episode of the workbench build, I'm going to show you how I designed the bench in Fusion 360. Remember that the Fusion 360 portion of this video is recorded without sound, then it's edited and added voiceover afterwards. Therefore, the work in Fusion is not real time. <laughs> in real time, I would say I used approximately 6 to 8 hours on making this model. First, I open a new project or design. I right click on the main component in this project and create a new component that is going to be the first of the two tabletops. By creating the component first and then start your sketches and build up inside them, you will get a very tidy project file layout. After renaming the new component, you have to be sure that the component you are working on is selected or activated. Okay. Let's make a new sketch inside this top one component. I'm going to place it on the set axis plane since I want to sketch the board from the side. I'm checking out my measurements document here where I calculated all the sizes and length. Here I see that my tabletop boards after jointing and thicknessing is going to be 35 times 135 millimeters or 3.5 times 13.5 centimeters. That's approximately 1.4 times 5.3 inches. So they were 135 times 35 millimeters. Then I click finish sketch, which enables me to select the extruder tool to extrude the sketch. From my measurements document, I know that the length of the tabletop is going to be 1,500 millimeters or approximately 59 inches. Okay, now I can go into the bodies of the top one component and copy paste the body I just made and then move it next to the first body. Then I select the two bodies I now have and copy paste move them right next to the other one. Then selecting the four bodies I have, copy paste move them to the other one. This gives me 8 bodies or boards and I know that one side of the tabletop is going to be put together of 12 boards. I can copy paste move the 4 last bodies next to the other one. Here we have a model of one side of the tabletop completed. To make the other tabletop I'm just going to right click on the top one component and click copy. When that's done, I need to make sure to right click on the main component in the project and click on the paste new in the drop down menu. This gives me a new component that I can rename to top 2 and move it to where it should be. I want the middle board between the tabletops to be 70 millimeters or approximately 2.7 inches. Okay. So here we have a model of the two tabletops finished. Just to make them look a bit better, I'm going to add a wood appearance to the tabletops by first activating the main component, then going to the appearance tool under the modify menu. Here I can select the wood solid folder, then the finish folder, download the 3D pine semi-gloss appearance and apply it to both tabletop components. When applying an appearance to a component, all the bodies in that component get the same appearance. Now when that's done, it's time to make a new component under the main component and call it legs1. Make sure that the legs1 component is activated before you create a new sketch. I'm also putting this sketch on the set axis plane. It's time for me to bring up the measurements document again and calculate the measurements of the legs. The total height of the workbench is going to be 830 millimeters or 83 centimeters. That's approximately 32.7 inches. 
The height of the tabletops are 135 millimeters or 13.5 centimeters. I live in metric land, but I know I have some imperial viewers, so bring on the units converter. The total height is 83 centimeters, approximately 32.7 inches. Tabletop height is 13.5 centimeters, approximately 5.3 inches. To find the height of the legs, I take the workbench total height subtracted by the tabletop height. This gives me 830 millimeters subtracted by 135 millimeters. That equals 695 millimeters. So the leg height on this workbench is 695 millimeters or 69.5 centimeters. That's approximately 27.4 inches. Now we can make a model of the legs. The leg height is set to 695 millimeters and I want the legs to be three boards in width. That's 105 millimeters or 10.5 centimeters, approximately 4.2 inches. I do exactly the same on the other side and also sketch up the individual boards on both legs. Now it's time to finish the sketch and select the extrusion tool from the create menu to extrude the legs to the desired depth of 135 millimeters, 13.5 centimeters, approximately 5.3 inches. I do the same on all the individual boards and check to select the new body command in operations drop down menu. Then it's copy paste all the bodies just made and move them to the other side of the workbench. I make sure the legs are pushed 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters, approximately 3.9 inches inside the far edges of the tabletop. Then I go into the modify menu, click on appearance and apply the 3D pine wood finish to the leg component. It's beginning to look like a workbench now. Now it's time to model the tenants on the legs that are going to fit some mortises in the tabletop. First make sure that the legs one component is activated and start a new sketch under the create menu. I will put this sketch on top of one of the legs. Then under the create menu select the center rectangle tool. This means that wherever you click to start the rectangle that will be the center of it. When the cursor snaps to the center point of the leg, I click once to start a rectangle operation. There is no need to keep the mouse button pressed. I want the measurement from the edge of the leg to the wall of the tenon to be the same all the way around the tenon. This is because it will be the easiest way to cut it using my table saw. Now I can do the same on all the legs. I'm using the project include tool from the create menu to project the middle leg board onto the sketch so it's easier to find the center point using the center rectangle tool. When that's done, I finish the sketch. Use the extract tool to select the tenants we just sketched. Turn on the tabletop models so it's possible to check the height of the extrusion of the tenants. I'm able to use a tenon height of 95 mm or 9.5 cm, approximately 3.7 inches. Select Join in the Operation drop down menu to join the tenons with the leg bodies and be sure to de visualize the tabletops so they don't combine with the tenons or legs, because that would make a mess of things. <laughs> then press OK, and here we have the four legs almost completed. To cut the tenons up into the tabletop like mortises, I am using something called Combine Cut. This lets you cut in one body using another body as the cut tool. Let's go into the Modify menu and select the Combine tool. Inside the Combine tool you must select Cut from the Operation drop down menu and you must check the Keep Tool checkbox if you would like to keep the body you are doing the cutting with. Then you can select one target body, which is the body you would like to cut, and then select the tool body, which is the body you would like to use as a cutting tool. It's not possible to select more than one target body, and since my tabletop consists of many bodies, I must repeat this action until the whole mortise is cut. I repeat the combined cut operation on all the legs. Now it's time to model the stretchers between the legs. 
First, I made a new component and named it Beams. Clicked on the new sketch under the Create menu, select the sketch axis to be one side of the leg. I want the stretchers to be made out of two 2x4s, that is jointed thicknesses down to a size of 35 times 90 mm, approximately 1.4 times 3.5 inches. I place two of these beside each other before I finish this sketch and activate the extruder tool under the create menu. Extrude the stretchers all the way over to the other leg. Be sure that the new body is selected in the operation drop-down menu and click OK. Now it's time to make the tenons on the stretcher. Click new sketch and put the sketch plane on the end of the stretcher. I want the same for the tenon here as on the legs with the same distance from the wall of the tenon to the edge of the stretcher so it's easy to cut with the table saw. I draw the center line so the center rectangle tool snaps to the center of the stretcher. I make the tenon 40 mm times 60 mm, 1.6 times 2.35 inches. Finish the sketch and select the extruder tool from the create menu and extrude the tenon rectangle. I change the view and put visibility on the leg to find out how long the tenon is going to be. In this case it's set at 100 mm or 10 cm, that's approximately 3.9 inches. Now I can do exactly the same on the other side of the stretcher, like so. And then select the body just created for the stretcher and copy paste move it to the other side of the workbench and make sure that it's edge to edge with the legs. I have some reclaimed African hardwood floor that I want to use for dowels and other details on this workbench, so I start by making a new component that is called dowels. Be sure that this is selected before clicking new sketch under the create menu. I place this sketch plane on the outside of the leg. To get the stretcher's tenon referenced in this sketch, I go to the project include tool under the create menu and click project. All I need is the center line reference from the stretcher, so select the leg and sides of the stretchers for reference and click OK. Now I can select the line tool in the create menu and let it snap to the center line of the stretcher and draw a reference line. And since I want the dowels to be placed in the middle of the leg, I let it snap to the middle of the line just created and make a vertical reference line. Now I can select the center circle tool from the create menu and let it snap to the center of one of the vertical lines just created. The dowels are going to have a diameter of 16 mm or 1.6 cm, that's approximately 0.6 inches. Just to make things easy, I want to make the dowels on the opposite stretchers at the same time. Select the new sketch tool and put the sketch plane on the side of the opposite leg. Then it's easy to just select the project tool under the project include in the create menu and project the center points from the circles in the previous sketch onto this one and click OK. Select the center circle tool and make two identical 16 mm circles and click finish sketch. Select the extrude tool from the create menu Select two dowels on the same leg and figure out how long they are going to be by viewing from the side. I want the dowels to be as long as the stretcher is wide, 70mm or 7cm, that's approximately 2.75 inches. Click OK. Now I want to cut the newly made dowel into the body of the leg and the stretcher by using the Combine Cut tool from the Modify menu. This is done the same way as with the tenons on the legs to create the mortises in the tabletop. After this is done, I make the same dowels on the other side of the workbench using the same procedure and then combine cutting these into the bodies needed. Now it's time to make the short stretchers. I make and activate a component called beams, that's what I called it at the time I was making the model. Use new sketch and place the sketch plane on the side of the legs. The short stretchers are going to be made out of two 2x4s. I'm using the same procedure as I already did on the stretchers and therefore going through this quick. 
If you miss some details, you can rewind this video or let me know in the comments. I'm also making the tenons on the short stretchers using the center rectangle tool like on the long stretchers. Repeat on the other side. When the short stretchers is modeled, I copy paste move it to the other side of the workbench. Adding the same 3D pine appearance to all the stretchers. Then I model the dowels on the tenons of the short beams using the same method as on the other dowels and making them the same length as the width of the short stretcher. Then model the dowels on the other side. When everything is modeled, I use the combined cut procedure to cut the dowels into the legs and into the short beam tenons. To support the bench top, there need to be stretchers connecting the legs in the top, so I copy paste move the lower beams to the top since they are going to be the same size. I do the same with the dowels, copy paste move and use the combined cut tool again to make the mortises and holes for the dowels. Repeat the copy paste move on the other side of the bench, also with the dowels and in the end the combined cut tool. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> As you see I have only made the dowels on one side of the workbench, therefore it's time to copy paste move all the dowels from one side of the bench to the other side of the bench. And of course use the combined cut tool to make the holes. Now, the only thing missing on this split top workbench is the center board. This is a removable board that combines the two tabletops. The board is going to have multiple functions as I will show later when the workbench is finished. I model the center board by calculating the distance between the bench tops and dividing that so that I get three boards with the same thickness. These measurements are going to change as I build the workbench, of course. The center board is going to consist of two long boards with four short boards sandwiched between them. I will give it a darker appearance since it's going to be made out of the same wood that I will use to make the dowels. Here we have the Rubo style split top workbench in all its glory. This is at least the initial plan and I'm sure I'm going to have to make some adjustments and change it as I start building. I will try to show you all the changes I have to make. That's it for this first episode in the Rubo style workbench series and I hope you have enjoyed it or at least learned something new about working in Fusion 360, which is free to use by the way, for hobbyists and startups. I will try to leave a link in the description. As always, subscribe, like, dislike or comment, follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes photos and videos or visit my website or Facebook page if you want. Everything is linked in the description of this video. That's it for now, see you later, goodbye.